if y'all have watched the last few videos, uh, I told y'all I was gonna be cooking out of the Bible for a few recipes and we've done it. Um, the last recipe I wanna share with y'all, you know, we make a recipe and we, I may cook three or four things and, um, all right, let me back up and say that again. We may do four videos in one day. And so how they air, you know, I don't know. That's the computer people's job to do that. Right, Teresa, or is yes. it yours or no, whose job? that's Kenzie, social media. She does okay. an awesome job. <laughs> yes, she does, doesn't she? So uh, I wanted to share this Brunswick stew recipe with y'all because in the fall, um, you know, it's such a hot, hearty dish and it's big in the South. And I tell you this, from Georgia all the way through the uh, the uh, low country states, they gonna argue that their Brunswick stew is the best. So for the amount of work that this one is y'all, it's so very good. And um, I remember when my Uncle Bernie and my Aunt Glennis were alive, that would be Don, Don, Kathy, and Michelle's father, uh, my daddy's older brother. Uh, he and Aunt Glennis lived out in the country in Statesboro. And Uncle Bernie would make Brunswick stew. But back then, the old older people said you couldn't make Brunswick stew without a hog head. You had to have the whole hog head to go in the pot and you cooked it and you cooked it and you cooked it and then when you thought you've cooked it enough you cook it more <laughs> and I remember them doing this outside out in the yard I'm gonna recreate it in about 10 minutes <laughs> how about that Minus and, the hog and it's <laughs> all right here in the Bible minus what the, the hog said yeah the hog no we're not using a hog head <laughs> But uh, I do love using a Boston butt for this, you know, boiling a Boston butt, mm -hmm. Teresa, along with chicken. You know, it's just good. All right, so to start this Brunswick stew off, y'all, I'm gonna take about eight pieces of bacon and I'm gonna cook it until it's almost crisp. You know, I just wanna get the flavor out of that pig. <laughs> so we'll pretend like this is the hog head. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we're not looking How's at that? a hog head. <laughs> Me too, because it's, it's a little much. I mean, I think they even leave the eyeballs Ugh. in, y'all. I really do. But that's old timey. That's the old timey way they did it. And I love uh, hearing those stories and even getting to witness some of them. If you live long enough, just think, um, 75 years from now, 50 years from now, this is all going to seem so backwards, you know? Yeah. I mean, because we're just going to keep technology. The next thing I know, they'll have me in somebody's kitchen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you won't have to leave here. And I want to leave here. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Okay, and then after our bacon is done, y'all, uh, I'm gonna throw in some onions, some diced onions, and um, it depends on what state you're in, what region of the South that you're in. Uh, some people may put like okra. I mean, you just, everybody has their own version of Brunswick stew. Um, I really like I like to make my Brunswick stew with my homemade barbecue sauce because it gives it a little bit of a sweet taste and it just makes it real, real good. But I am using a store-bought today. I did not make this, but I am using one that's got a little sweet taste to it. We used to have so much fun when we'd go to Uncle Bernie's. He'd, he'd arrange horses for the kids to ride and, of course, had those fish, those wonderful fish uh, just growing in that lake in his mm -hmm. little pond. Uh, 
he would he would borrow campers and put in his yard for us all to have a place to stay. Oh, yeah, because they their house was just a two bedroom house. And there'd be like 18 of us, you know, coming, so. Oh, but it, we just had so much fun. So many wonderful, wonderful memories. And I do know that Aunt Glennis made the best macaroni and cheese in the whole entire world. And Aunt Glennis was not necessarily one of the best cooks I've ever met. I mean, she could bake some cakes and Her things. Her chili bars were good. Oh, her chewy bars are delicious. But, you know, I don't, I don't remember her just getting in there and cooking a whole bunch of different things. But that macaroni and cheese, honey, step back, Jack, cause she gonna whip your butt. She perfected it. Yes, yes. It's all about quality, not quantity. Yes. Uh, she would have to make it every meal brand new. But the difference in her macaroni and cheese is she used that red hook cheese that you find mm. uh, sitting on the meat counter sometimes. At a country store, it's always back there sitting on the counter in the meat department. But that cheese, it changes everything. It changes everything, yes. Yeah. All right, so in go our onions, our our uh, bacon has rendered some nice, nice juice. So this is ready, ready to start mixing all of our good stuff together. Now, uh, the recipe in Paula Dean's uh, Bible calls for, what, 10 ounces? Yes. 10 ounces of uh, lima beans, and this is, a 32 ounce. So I'm just going to take what I think is a third and dump in there. I'm going to take a cup of chicken stock and cover that with that. And then I'm going to take, uh, how, many, how many ounces is that? 28 uh, ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Now, I'm a huge, huge fan, y'all, of crushed tomatoes because for some reason, I just don't like, except on some dishes, but I just, sometimes those diced tomatoes, they will stay in the form of uh, a diced potato, a diced tomato. Yeah, they don't really stew down. No, uh -uh, they don't stew down, and I like mine stewed down. So, there we go, and I'm gonna rinse that out with just a little bit of water. Okay, and I may add some more butter beans. All right, now I'm gonna add, uh, how many ounces is this? 14, I think. That sounds right, but I can't see it. But this size can, y'all, of cream corn. And that's gonna give us a sweet taste. Now, you can use, if you don't wanna use a sweet corn, canned corn or if you don't have any, uh, you can use whole kernel. It's perfectly fine. All right, now I'm gonna add some white vinegar, Worcestershire sauce, Celery salt. Let's see what else I got under around this book. That's it. Besides the chicken, I'm gonna add just a little squirt more of butter beans or lima beans. I just like that color in there. Okay. Now I'm going to add a half a cup of my barbecue sauce that I did not make. <laughs> barbecue sauce is so easy to make. Did you know that, Teresa? Not, wouldn't even think to try. Oh, you just put what you like in. Okay, so along with that sweet corn, it's gonna give it that little hint of sweet that we like. 
And last but not least, your chicken. And I'm using six cups or four cups. I can't. Well, it's four cups, but I think you okay. added more to it. Oh, that's right, I did. <laughs> I sure did. I know that, that your viewers will be shocked. <laughs> and I recommend now not not mincing up your chicken but leaving it in nice big chunks because by the time it cooks down you don't want it you know where you can't tell it's even chicken all right so that's it i'm gonna put a little black pepper in it and then i will check it for salt after it's cooked a while And if you like it hotter, you can always drop a little hot sauce in there. And uh, even though I didn't include this in my recipe, I will probably drop some butter down in it. So that's it, Uncle Bernie. Are you rolling yet? <laughs> Are you rolling around in your grave? that uh, your niece would be making Brunswick stew in 10 minutes. <laughs> so we're going to give it 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, we have to cook it just till the lima beans are done, really. So that's it, kitties. Then you taste it and you season it to match your tongue. Okay. It's taste time. I might be pushing a little bit. Those butter beans or lima beans may need a little bit more cooking, but uh, I want to taste it for uh, uh, seasoning before I call everybody to the table. Oh, it's good. It's got that sweet kick that I like for Brunswick stew. Lima beans are not quite done. <laughs> they look chewy. <laughs> but the flavor is good. Well, and the longer you let it sit, the better it gets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's like spaghetti or anything like that. The longer it has time to sit, the better it gets. But we're not taking 24 hours with it. I can tell you that. <laughs> I see dinner. Uh-huh. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I have trouble following my own recipes, y'all. Have y'all figured that out? <laughs> have you figured that out, Teresa? Eddie and I have figured it out, <laughs> for sure. So I'm going to see if I have a little liquid smoke. Do y'all use liquid smoke ever? No. You don't? Eddie and I are like... We don't cook. What do you need? <laughs> well, I don't. Wait, I do. I do have some. I'm going to put just a drop, and this will help give it that flavor that the meat has been cooked over, like a little charcoal, just a little bit. And it'll help give it that smoky, smoky flavor. That might make your uncle a little happier. <laughs> All right, now let's, let's see. You know, I can play with a dish like this, Teresa. I can play with it for hours. And that's what your uncle used to do. And that's why it uh -huh. took hours. <laughs> but I did mine 10 minutes now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is what it needed. Mm-hmm. Y'all enjoy it, because I think we're fixing to have a cool spell, are we not? And this will be so good on a chilly night. Mm -hmm. Eat it out on the porch. <laughs> well, love and best dishes, y'all. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey, y'all, it's Paula Dean. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, and click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be alerted when I post a video.
Love and best dishes, y'all.